Praise the Lord. It is wonderful to, it's wonderful to see everyone here this morning. I want to welcome you again to the Lighthouse Pentecostal Church. It's good to see you here this morning. If this is your first time uh, at the church this morning, at the Lighthouse Church, I want to welcome you. If you're able to, I'd love to spend some time with you after service. We'll we have some tea and coffee and some fellowship after service. Praise God, and we'll spend some time together. It is, uh, you may have come in this morning and noticed something a little different, and uh, that is the chairs. And so we've got 58 chairs spread out through here now, and they're all uniform, and they're all uh, all very comfortable and nice. I've sat at different, different ones, and I was like, oh, what's it look like from here? What's it look like from here? <laughs> but uh, they're, they're nice, and um, I want to thank this church for all the effort and the work and everything that this church has done to, uh, to do everything that's, that's happened. We've seen a lot happen this year, new carpet, paint, new chairs, and uh, that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort, and I want to uh, thank this church for everything uh, that's been done. And with all the new things, and I think it's good that we, um, and all the work that's been put in by everyone, everyone here, I think it's good that we set up a couple things, and I'm going to put some signs up and stuff. We're going to make in this area here a water-only area, um, and so it'll be water-only. Tea and coffee we'll have outside, we'll have in the fellowship room back there, and uh, anytime we have lunches and stuff, we'll... We'll still have all that, but we'll just try our best to uh, to keep this area to a water-only area and uh, take care of what God has blessed us with. We've put in a lot of work, and God has blessed us with with these things. and uh, And the Bible says, if you're faithful with a little, He'll give you more. And so, uh, and so, I want to be faithful with what God has has blessed us with and take care of take care of those things. It's wonderful again to see everyone here this morning. Let's turn to the word this morning. We're in Luke chapter 15. And with the comfortable chairs, if anybody starts to fall asleep, I may get a little nerf something or rather and throw it at you. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't be able to see you, sir. So. <laughs> oh, praise God. Luke chapter 15 starting at verse 1, and if you're here Sunday night, you may think, well, we just heard all this, we heard a lot of this Sunday night. I've been feeling to preach this for a couple of weeks, and then lo and behold, Sunday night, Brother Corey preached pretty much, uh, not quite exactly the same, but from the same verses, uh, Sunday night. So God, God wants to speak to us. <laughs> God wants to speak to us. So Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 1 says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans... And sinners for to hear him. Jesus was teaching, and the publicans and the sinners came around to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. The Pharisees and the 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 whitened sepulchres or the whitened graves is what Jesus Jesus called them. The the higher ups kind of stuck their nose up and said, "This Jesus, he he eats with sinners, and he receives them." Well, and they murmured amongst themselves. Verse three, and he spake this parable to them, saying, "What man of you, having an having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them?" Doth not leave the ninety and nine in the in the wilderness and go after the one that which is lo- that which is lost until he find it, and when he hath found it, he he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and when and when he cometh hen, cometh home, he calleth he calleth together. His, his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, 
that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Verse 8. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth, all, calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I want to preach this morning for a little while on this subject, changing the world, changing the world. Let's pray this morning for the word. God, I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that you would minister to us. God, I pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to what you want to speak to us this morning, to what you want to minister to us, that we would take what we hear, that we would apply it to our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Changing the world. I want you to notice here to begin with that the, the Pharisees and the, and the scribes, they come together and they're watching what Jesus is doing and the sinners and the publicans and uh, the, the, the not so nice and not so prim and the proper of society come to Jesus and it becomes apparent based on what the Pharisees and the scribes say that, that Jesus is breaking bread with them as he teaches, that he's fellowshipping with them, that he's talking with them, that that they're, they're having discussion because the scribes and the Pharisees, they murmur amongst themselves and they say, this man hangs out with sinners. This man spends time with sinners and he eats with them. But so I want you to notice what Jesus does. Jesus doesn't turn to the scribes and Pharisees. He doesn't say, now let me explain myself. Let me, let me, tell, you, tell, me tell you why. He just carries on doing what he's doing. He just keeps on doing what he's doing. Brothers and sisters, there's going to be times in your Christian walk with God. There's going to be times in your relationship with God that there will be people that will murmur and say, this person's a bit different. This person's a bit odd. They live a little bit differently. They act a little bit differently. I can't believe they're hanging out with that person. I can't believe they've invited them over for dinner. Do they know that what part of town they live in? Do they know uh, what kind of job they have? Do they know what kind of situation they're in? Do they know that that they're not living by biblical principles? Do they know that their relationship with God is pretty weak and not very strong? You have people that will murmur like that if you if you walk with God long enough, if you if you live with God long enough, you'll have people that'll say things and say, oh. you have that. You'll go through that. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you what Jesus did. Jesus said, I know, what, I know what I'm here to do. I know who I'm here for. I know, what, I know what I'm called to do. I know where God is, where I'm being led and what I need to do. And, and, and he says that many times in his, in his ministry, he says, the, the healed don't need a physician. They don't need the doctor. He says, I've come to those that are broken to those that are broken hearted. I've come to restore, to rebuild. Brothers and sisters, yes, you're sitting in what we call a church this morning, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you what this place is. It's a hospital. It's a place for the broken hearted. It's a place to restore hope in people's lives. It's a place to restore broken minds and broken relationships. It's not a place for, the, uh, for, for, for just the prim and the proper. It's not for the place of the elect to society, but it's a place for the top to the bottom. In every levels that society, in every label that society wants to put on people. This is a place for everyone. 
This is a place where you can come and your life can be rebuilt, where your hope can be restored, where your broken heart can be mended through the power of God. This is a place where you can bring your bruises and your battered and your cuts and your wounds, be it physical, emotional, mental, whatever it may be, to God and allow Him to heal. People may say things, but let me tell you something, this will be a church that continues to do what God has instructed the church to do. No matter what may be murmured, no matter what may be whispered, we will continue to follow the will of God and the leading of God that is given through the word. Changing the world, changing the world. It's quite an ambitious thing. It's quite an ambitious thing. I was talking with Brother Corey as we were putting the title together for the for the stream and stuff because I, I forgot to do it earlier in the uh, earlier in the week I said changing the world as easy as one two three not really not really it's an ambitious thing to change the world but Jesus changed the world his disciples they said turn the world upside down it's an ambitious thing to change the world and I'm going to tell you how he did it this morning you see, nobody grows up and, and begins their life and, and, and no athlete, or nobody in any career or nobody says, man, 18 years of old, of age, off to college or starting a career, whatever. I hope I have a really average life. Nobody says, man, I hope things are just mediocre. I'll be happy with above average. No coach gets the team together before, before the big final, the big uh, premiership game and says, okay, boys, let's play average. No, no. He says, I want to see things that, uh, that, that's never been seen before. I want to I wanna see the, the unbelievable. If you didn't see it, you wouldn't believe it. I want to I wanna see the uh, things that just change the sport. And we live our life Desiring to change the world. Desiring to, to have an impact on the world. But you see, Jesus tells a parable here. A shepherd who had a hundred sheep and one got lost. And he leaves the 99 to go after the one. He says, let me find that one that was lost. Let me find that one that strayed away. Because if I don't find that one, the wolf, will, the wolves will get him. So let me go find the one that was lost. And he continues on by saying, what woman having 10 pieces of silver, she loses one. And she sets all the nine aside. She searches the house, top to bottom. She sweeps, and the Bible says she seeks diligently after the one. Seeks diligently. She puts effort into it. She puts work into it. She diligently looks for it. And 99 is pretty good. That's 99%. One lost. Okay. Nine is pretty good. One piece of silver. Lost. Okay. How many people drop a coin and think, ah, uh, or get frustrated by the five cents or ten cents. You think, ah. Oh. In the US, they still have pennies. It's stressful. <laughs> but they looked 
and they searched it out. And they went. And when they found the sheep, and when he found the co- and when she found the coin, they brought it back and threw a party, invited their friends, invited their neighbors invited people around to have a party. Hey, I lost this sheep, but I've found it. And Jesus says, when one sinner repents, when one person who didn't have a relationship with me comes and says, I want to have a relationship with the one who created, created me, with the one who formed me, I want to have a relationship with the one who knows the number of hairs on my head, with the one who, who, who formed me in the womb, with the one who knows every step I take. I want to have a relationship with my God, my creator. Jesus says there's a party in heaven over one. Over one. We celebrate, I think it was last year, 6,000 in Bangladesh received the Holy Ghost in a conference. That's wonderful. That's exciting. That's, 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 we love hearing of those things. But let me tell you something. Each of those 6,000 is not just a statistic. It's one person. It's someone's mother. It's someone's husband. It's someone's son or daughter that's given their life to God. It's an individual. It's a person. We can't just see a, we can't just see a church as a conglomerate of people. We can't just see the body of Christ as, as just a, a big group of people, but we need to see each individual person. Each person. Because for every person that gives their life to God, the angels in heaven celebrate. The angels throw a party. This world, society, will tell you, look at the numbers. Okay, you've lost one, 99. You've got 99. You've still got nine. It'll tell you to, to look at the, the crowd. But that's not what Jesus did. That's not what Jesus did. You see, he understood eventually, eventually the crowd and the path he was taking would leave him. You can read it in, uh, it, 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 in the Gospels. He, preach, he, he does the feeding of the 5,000 men, not counting women and children, probably 15,000 people from five loaves and two fish. And then he begins to teach. And he teaches commitment and dedication and discipline Because if you're going to be a disciple, it takes discipline. And he teaches these things, and slowly the crowd dissipates. After the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, he's left with his disciples. There comes a time even that he asks his disciples, will you leave me also? And so Jesus... All throughout his ministry, yes, he drew crowds. Crowds came to him. Crowds were attracted to him. But his focus was on the one. In Mark chapter 5, we, and I encourage you to read it sometime, we read of the, of the disciples traveling to the Gadarenes across a, a stormy sea that many believe was even spiritual in the storm, trying to stop Jesus and his disciples 
from getting to the land of the Gadarenes. And there, up in the tombs in the mountains, they come across uh, a man known as the demoniac, uh, possessed with a legion of spirits. And Jesus comes, and the long story short, casts the spirits out, and the man's free. And then he gets kicked out along of the Gadarene land along with the disciples. They get put back in that boat to travel back across the sea. After traveling all their way out of the way to meet this one man. To spend time with this one man. To free him. But if you, if you study future on, this one man ends up causing a revival to break forth through his people. But Jesus went all his way, all out of his way, through a stormy sea, so that he could speak to one person. So that he could minister to one person. We read in John chapter 5, and I encourage you again sometime to read it. John chapter 5, Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem, and there's the pool of Bethsaida there, which comes every now and then, an angel would come down and stir the water. And if you could be the first to get into the pool, you would be healed if you could be the first one to get into the pool. And so you can imagine a pool like that with an angel that comes and stirs the water. There's a lot of people with ailments and disabilities and uh, there'd be vision impaired people. There'd be people unable to walk. There would be all kinds that would be there gathered at the pool just waiting for the moment that the water would be stirred. But Jesus comes in, and there'd be all these people there, and he comes to one lame man, simply asks him, do you want to be whole, do you want to be healed, and the lame man answers, he says, well, no one's here to help me get in the water when it's stirred, and I, I don't get in in time, and Jesus repeats the question, essentially saying, I didn't ask if you wanted help getting in the water. I just asked if you wanted to be healed. The answer is the answer's yes or no. And, and the lame man says, well, yes, yes, I want to be healed. And Jesus heals him and goes on his way. My mind goes to all the others that are there all the others that are lame and maimed as well. But Jesus comes to this one. Jesus' ministry, the majority of his ministry, Jesus heals people one at a time. He focuses on one person. He focuses on just uh, just that one person. I can't imagine what it would have been like to have a conversation with Jesus because you know he would have been hearing what you had to say. Just a few, three years, and all his trained is 12 people. All his discipled is 12 people over three years. We would look at that today and statistically and say, wow, that's uh, okay. <laughs> Three years, 12 people, that's four people a year. Jesus, we need to talk about your church growth program. <laughs> but he's discipled. 12 people poured into them, spent time with them dedicated time to them, and he focuses on the individual, one at a time. 
majority of his miracles were always one person. I was sharing with my brother what I was preaching. He said, well, what about the 10 lepers? I said, Jesus was pressed for time. That was a... (laughs) (laughs) So that's why I say majority of Jesus' healings was one at a time, one person. You'll notice only one came back and only one was made whole for worshiping and being thankful. Jesus tells his disciples this in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The word nations there means cultures, races, people, diversity. Make disciples, teach, train, and make disciples. This is what we're called to. This is the great great commission, to go and make disciples. You want to know how Jesus changed the world? One person at a time. One person at a time. Well, you, 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 you can study history, and there's no one that changed the world more than Jesus. Jesus rewrote history. And he did it one person at a time. Brothers and sisters, let me encourage you this morning. You can look out, and you can think, Alice Springs needs God. Australia needs God. This world desperately needs God. And, and you can look at, the, look at the task. And you can think the task, God, it's so big. The job is so big. The harvest is so large. The, 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 there's so many people, God. And if you do that too much, church, you'll miss the person sitting across the coffee table from you that needs to hear about Jesus. Yes, the world needs God. Alice Springs needs God. And we will reach Alice Springs. One person at a time, as each of us disciple someone. You may say, Pastor, I, I can't disciple someone. I, I don't know enough about the Bible. You've experienced God's love. Share that with someone. Share that love with someone. Share that grace, that kindness, that mercy with someone. If I could have some music, please. This is how we will reach our springs, is one person at a time. A grandfather was walking along with his grandson along a beach. And he, every so often, he'd bend over and pick up a little sand dollar and throw it into the ocean. Sand dollar is a I'm not sure of the term here in Australia, but the sand dollar is essentially a little, just a little shell type thing. And so he'd pick up a sand dollar every so often and throw it in the ocean as they walked down the beach, bend over and pick up another one, throw it, walk another few meters and another one and throw it in. Eventually his grandson, just five, six years old, said, Grandpa, Why? Are you throwing these little sand dollars into the ocean? The grandfather said, well, they're they're living organisms. And if I don't throw them back, they'll die here on the beach. 
him up and I saw him back and my grandson says, but grandpa, there's hundreds, there's thousands of them all over the beach. You could see them all there. They're everywhere. What difference does it make, Grandpa? What difference does it make? And the grandfather picks up another sand dollar, throws it in the ocean. And he said to that one, it made the world of difference. Brothers and sisters, church, you will, we will reach Alice Springs with the love of God one person at a time. And each time for that person, you're, ma you're making, you're making the world of difference. Let's stand together this morning. And this morning, as we pray, what I want prayer, what I want us to pray about is for the person that you know that needs to hear about Jesus. We, we, I, I know there's a, we all have a lot of needs, a lot of different things that we're going through. I want us to set that aside. And just that one person that's going through your mind, lift them up to God this morning. If you want to come forward and pray for them, you come forward. Let's pray. Each of us that one person and let's pray that God would reach them and that we would be able to help disciple them as Sister Tracy plays and sings let's pray